A dead body found in Hamul over the weekend identified today. Detectives say he was murdered at a hotel in Chula Vista. A dog dies from poisoning and tainted meatballs are found in the family's backyard. We'll tell you more about the San Diego Humane Society's investigation. Plus, will California elect its first woman as governor in 2026? Our lieutenant governor says she's running. Were the last few months of heavy rain enough to effectively end the drought? We talked to the experts. And Americans helped his homeland of Haiti through a devastating earthquake. And now this Scripps nurse is returning the favor. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. A body found in East County has been identified as that of a man from the South Bay. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee. And I'm Jesse Pagan in for Carlo Chiquetto. The body was found in Hamul over the weekend, but as CBS 8's Brian White learned just a few hours ago, that's not where police say the victim was killed. Yeah, today the medical examiner's office identified that body as 40-year-old Jesse Valdez of Imperial Beach. He'd gone missing earlier this month, leaving his family searching for answers. Chula Vista police say Valdez was murdered at the Red Roof Inn Hotel on Broadway in Chula Vista. The suspects then removed his body from the hotel. According to their investigation, the suspect, who was known to the victim at the time, is 35-year-old Jorge Rodriguez, who is currently in custody at the San Diego County Jail on a first-degree murder charge. A second suspect, identified as 36-year-old Ali Mistone, has also been arrested. Valdez was reported missing to the sheriff's department by his family more than two weeks ago after he hadn't returned home or contacted his family for several days, at which point they posted this flyer. After learning foul play may have been involved at this hotel in Chula Vista, the sheriff's department contacted Chula Vista police, who began investigating the case. Over the weekend on Saturday, a body was discovered in a rural area of Hamul, and today the medical examiner's office identified the body as Jesse Val this. His family has been notified. Investigators are still actively seeking witnesses and gathering evidence in this case. We reached out to the Chula Vista police and to the family of the victim, but they both declined to go on camera. Anyone with information is asked to contact San Diego County Crime Stoppers at 888-580-8477. Brian White, CBS 8. Thanks, Brian. Traffic is once again moving on the 805 after a CHP officer shot a man who was advancing toward him with a knife during a traffic stop on the northbound lanes. It happened just before 8 o'clock this morning, right during rush hour. According to CHP, that man armed with a knife was advancing on the officer. The man ignored orders to stop, and that is when the officer shot him. He was taken to the hospital and is expected to survive. All five lanes of the 805 were shut down for about four hours, bringing traffic to a near stop. You see the gridlock there. When asked about the traffic nightmare, the CHP said these types of investigations are often very time consuming for a good reason. You have to be able to account for everything that um, that was fired, all the, all, the, all the casings, all the rounds, um, all evidence that uh, is out there. By one o'clock this afternoon, all lanes were finally reopened. We are learning more tonight about the shooting at Sunny Cedro basketball star Mikey Williams' Hamul home last month. CBS 8 obtained the sheriff's dispatch logs associated with the incident. As David Godfordson reports, the records say the shooting victim showed up at the home unannounced to ask for a walkthrough of the mansion. The call to the sheriff's department came one day after the shooting incident at this home in Hamul co-owned by 18-year-old basketball star Mikey Williams. The reporting party told officers that three minors and two adults drove to the home on Bratton Valley Road on the evening of March 27th. Quote, he and some friends went to the address unannounced to ask Blank for a walkthrough of his mansion when Blank's roommate, redacted name, came out and shot at the reporting party's rental vehicle. That vehicle was a 2023 Tesla, which the sheriff's department tells me has been impounded as evidence in the case. It was hit with gunfire in the rear of the vehicle as it drove away, according to a relative of the driver who said the 25-year-old man behind the wheel was an Uber driver. I am not aware of any relationship between those individuals and my client. Williams' defense attorney confirmed there was no party at the house the teenager has pleaded not guilty to five counts of assault with a deadly weapon and one count of firing a gun at an occupied vehicle.
He faces 28 years in prison if convicted on all counts. My colleague Kelly Hesedal asked the attorney last week outside court about the house where the shooting happened. Is that his home? Does he own that home? That is a home that Mr. Williams purchased, yes. Property records show the house was purchased in August of last year by a 61-year-old minister by the name of Shakir Zaid with an address in Huntersville, North Carolina. Zaid signed over co-ownership of the $1.2 million mansion to Mikey Williams via this grant deed that has a handwritten note on it saying, quote, gift, no consideration. The minister grew up in Oakland, California, according to an online biography that says he is a senior pastor at Rapture International Ministries. Zaid did not respond to my messages seeking comment. Mikey Williams remains free on $50,000 bail. He'll be back in court for a preliminary hearing on June 29th. In Kearney Mesa, David Goffertson, CBS 8. Thanks, David. Los Angeles and state leaders gathered in Monterey Park today to propose three new laws aimed at curbing gun violence. Today's gathering took place three months after a mass shooting killed 11 people and wounded nine others at a Lunar New Year dance. Democratic State Assemblyman Mike Fong was joined by L.A. Mayor Jose Sanchez, L.A. District Attorney George Gascon, and the founder of the Prosecutors Alliance. One proposal would require courts to keep cases open until defendants have given up their guns. The second would prevent government agencies from reselling seized guns and ammunition. The third would require a translator to be present at emergencies in communities where a large number of people speak a language other than English. Tonight, a San Diego family is telling us that UC Davis has confirmed their worst fear. Meatballs they found in their backyard had rat poison inside. That family is devastated after they say their dog died from poisoning. CBS 8 Santa Laurel went to the family's home today that the family now calls a crime scene. The San Diego Humane Society is investigating this case. I went to the home where this happened earlier today and met a woman who says she no longer feels safe to let her other dog roam free in their own backyard anymore. We're still mourning and um, I think it's really difficult on my children to process because we, um, we don't know who did this, but we know that it, it was clearly intentional. Rita Olosio's family got brothers Milo and Toby as puppies. I know those two really loved each other. They loved on us as much as we loved on them. One morning last month, they came in from the backyard and Rita says she noticed something very wrong with Toby. He seemed to be very anxious. His eyes were dilated. He started to go into a seizure mode. She raced to the animal hospital. Records show cluster seizures that no medication could control. The doctor had indicated most likely it was uh, due to a poisoning. After hours of seizures, they had to put Toby down. Doctors put Milo on anti-seizure meds just in case. I thought, wow, um, there's a number of things that could have been out here. Once home and heartbroken, Rita started searching her backyard to see if she could find what Toby could have gotten into. These are pictures she took of what she says she discovered, describing what looks like meatballs with a blue coating. I did a Google lens. I took a picture of the meatballs and just a massive amount of information was being poured towards me about toxic meatballs. She kept researching and contacted a doctor at UC Davis with a connection to the San Diego Humane Society. She sent the doctor the balls. This document from UC Davis shows the meatballs tested positive for strychnine. For me, that was a shock because I realized that this may have been planted here. Um, on purpose. Rita called the police and they pointed her to the San Diego Humane Society. Milo now wears a mesh muzzle outside and when he's inside, he lays where his brother Toby used to. To lose more than just a pet, but truly a, a family member that got us through some really hard times. It's devastating beyond words. In San Diego, this is Anna Laurel for CBS 8. San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria presented his proposed budget to the City Council today. The mayor's getting it done budget is $5.1 billion, $47 million more than last year. It includes $81.7 million for homelessness services, $140 million for street repairs, and $4 million to deploy smart street lights. The City Council will release a review of the budget Friday. The budget review committee hearings will start May 3rd. 
Still ahead tonight, is a Saudi Arabian company using California's water for its own purposes? We verify. And where one group of high schoolers turned rejection and disappointment into a party. Talking about the fact that we've got that marine layer still lingering around. So it's starting to move in and it's going to stick around through tomorrow morning. What does that mean for our temperatures? All those details are coming up. And up next, jury selection starts in the trial of a man accused of a mass murder at a synagogue.